store for us today, and I'm glad that we're starting it off together in worship from wherever you are. Uh, know that God is here and God is present with you and with all of us as we worship today. So welcome on this fifth Sunday of the Easter season. Welcome to worship. And now we come before God. We center our thoughts, we center our minds, we center our attentions, kind of tuning out all of the, the stuff that's around us, and we take this time to worship God. I invite you to stand as we begin our worship service today and join me in the call to worship that's projected onto the screen followed by our opening hymn, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Let's begin our worship time together. <clears throat> we are branches rooted in the vine of Christ. We come because we seek to abide in Christ. The branches that remain in the vine bear much fruit. We come because we long to be spiritually vibrant, alive, productive. If we abide in Christ, then Christ's words will abide in us. We come because we strive to be faithful disciples. We gather for worship now, to the glory of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May we grow wildly as God tends us lovingly.
And so, you've probably guessed it by now, our scripture lesson this morning is out of John's Gospel where Jesus continues on with that discourse. This time it's, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so, if you haven't guessed from the, the photos and the pictures and the, and the uh, display, then that's, uh, that's our scripture today. So all of our, our elements of worship are going to be focused around that scripture, including this time of prayer. As you think about your own life, and you think about Christ is the, the vine, and we are the branches, and you think about this whole, uh, what's happening outside in this season of spring, as things start to grow and blossom and, and change colors and, and all of that, and, and you think about that analogy, and you compare that analogy to our life. Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches gives us hope, I believe. So we come to this time of prayer, and I want to offer a prayer about that for all of us. I just want to speak to God kind of on all of our behalf. Specific prayer requests, as always, we're going to wait till later, and I do have a few. So uh, let's hang around after, and we'll, we'll offer prayer together as a church family. But for now, let's just sort of turn our thoughts and our attentions toward God as we come to God during this time of prayer. Vine of life, in your branches we are nestled, taking shelter and sustenance in the shade of your strength. We place our roots in you. You nourish us and your Holy Spirit encourages us to reach our full potential in the gifts we have been given so that others may know of your love. Lord, make us more than sour grapes. May we look beyond the bitter divisions that we face to find your love at the core of our relationships. There, may all people work with what we have in common, that we might grow to be a people of respect and trust. May our branches bow heavy with the weight of the fruit you have bestowed on us. Help us to look beyond our own needs to recognize those who are hungry for food and love and justice and forgiveness. May we offer others the shelter they need under the weight of your branches so that they too can find a rest from the cold and darkness of this world. Instead, may your spirit enable us to value the gifts and the talents of all. May our leaves soak up your light. When we meet those who are worn down with illness and loneliness and grief, may the light of your presence shine in the encounters they have with others, so that all might know of your compassion. Gardener of all of life, as you trim and prune and shape us for your purpose, we place this prayer into your hands. We ask that you hear it. We also ask that you listen to us as we come together as one to pray the prayer that your son taught us as we pray it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Willow, I see you're here. Do you want to come up and talk to me for a little bit? Yes or no? Okay. All right. You just listen in because I got something to show you. Well, a little bit later. Okay. All right. So, so let's look at that scripture. First of all, I just want to share with you, like I've done the last couple of weeks, I want to share with you the psalm that has gone with the scripture uh, lessons for today. And today's psalm is Psalm 22. Remember last week it was Psalm 23. We're going backwards. I don't know why, but we're going to look at Psalm 22, verses 25 through 31. And it reads like this. 
I will praise you among all the people. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you. The poor will eat and be satisfied. All who seek the Lord will praise him. Their hearts will rejoice with everlasting joy. The whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. People from every nation will bow down before him, for the Lord is king. Let the rich of the earth, earth feast and worship. Let all mortals, those born to die, now bow down in his presence. Future generations will also serve him. Our children will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those yet unborn, and they will hear about everything that he has done. You can almost see people singing that old, singing those words and sharing those words together in worship. So let's take a look at the scripture lesson from today, from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, just a few short verses, verses 1 through 8. You probably have heard this already, but maybe listen to it in a new and different way, thinking about things you might not have learned before. These are the words of Jesus. I am the true, true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do not bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned for great fruitfulness by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful apart from me. Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who parts from me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you stay joined to me, and my words remain in you, you may ask any request you like, and it will be granted. My true disciples produce much fruit. This brings great glory to my Father. All right, let's talk about that scripture for just a little bit. I am the vine and you are the branches. We've heard it before, yes? Sure. It's familiar. It's relatable. It's something we all understand. It's part of the conversation between Jesus and the disciples around the dinner table on the night that Jesus was betrayed. It was part of that conversation, okay? You can read it in scripture. He's talking to his disciples for a number of chapters in the book of John before that Last Supper event. So this is kind of like they're having this dinner conversation and Jesus is trying to explain to them who he is, what he's about. It's where he tried for one final time to help the disciples understand who he was and what their relationship with him was like. And so he used this very relatable illustration to help them understand this idea of connection. So I thought about this scripture all week long, and the word that kept popping into my head was that word, connection, connection. That's about all I got, <laughs> was that word, connection. I knew that I'm supposed to say something about being connected. And as I thought about that, I've looked at, you know, studies have shown through this pandemic that what people miss the most, have missed the most, is that sense of connection, that sense of relationship with other people. And if we've learned anything during this time, we have learned that relationships are important. Relationships are important. That's what kept coming to me. We live in this world that is so interconnected. It's unbelievable. We are connected to others in ways we probably don't even fully imagine or understand 
you connect with Facebook with your friends. I got like, I never knew I had so many. A lot of friends. And you renew relationships. Have any of you renewed relationships that maybe with somebody you haven't seen for years? High school classmates, whatever it is. You reconnect, thanks to Facebook or the internet or some other kind of social media. And then the, beyond even that, we're connected. The internet connects us in so many ways, like, like paying our bills and doing our banking and emailing and making doctor's appointments and all of that other stuff. We're connected so well. Not only that, think about how our phones connect us today. Not only in our homes, but we are connected to each other through our phones, wherever there happens to be a cell tower close by, and maybe even not that. Connected. We are in the, this most interconnected world, and yet I go back to say we have to work so hard at staying connected. Would you agree? Is that just me? I think I, we're so connected, but we're so disconnected. And I wrestle with that sometimes. We, we seem to have to work so hard to make our relationships mean something. Despite the fact that we are connected so well. It doesn't matter what technology you're using, whether you're using social media or whether you're using your phone, it doesn't really matter whether you're using cable or even if you use the good old fashioned pick up the phone and call, a connection, or a communication, sorry, is only as good as its connection. Remember the days of getting cut off on your phone? Sometimes that still happens. You drive through a dead spot and get cut off. It's only as good as your connection, right? So let's just take a minute and let's look back over these scripture lessons that we have talked about since Easter Sunday. Let's just, let's just review a little bit. And what do we see in all of these scriptures? We see that word again, connection, relationship. Let's start with Easter morning. Remember, Mary went to the tomb, and she didn't even recognize Jesus until after he said her name and made that connection. Reminded her of that relationship. And then we spent two Sundays looking at Jesus' relationship with his disciples after the resurrection when he appeared to his disciples. What was that about? It was about relationship. It was about establishing connection again with those disciples so that they could go out and tell the good news about Jesus. And then he gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit so that they would never be alone and we could always be connected. And last week we looked at Jesus' relationship with his followers with the illustration of a shepherd and a sheep. That relationship that they shared. The shepherd who loves and cares for his sheep. And today we look at the relationship that we have with Jesus as he calls himself the vine that holds those branches on tight. He calls himself the true vine, and you, you are the branches. The branches cannot exist apart from the vine, he says. It is important to stay connected to Jesus. Staying connected to Jesus allows us to produce fruit that allows us to share the love of Christ with everyone we meet. There it is, relationship again. How do we do that? How do we stay connected to Jesus? Jesus tells you right there in the red letters. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, verse number seven, the inspired word of God, if my word remains in you, so what does that tell us? That God's word or the Bible is a connection to Jesus. These words will strengthen the connection. 
how do you stay connected to Jesus? I can hear you. In my mind, I, when I was looking at this, and my mind was going already, and maybe yours was going already. You mean, what? I can read the Bible? <laughs> I don't have time for that. i got to connect on Facebook. i got to see what people are doing. Read the Bible? I hardly have time to even look at it. We seem to have all kinds of time for lots of other things than staying connected to Jesus through his word. Maybe I'm only speaking for myself there. But I feel like sometimes I'm better connected to people by email or Facebook or texting or whatever than I am to the word of God sometimes, most of the time. I have a better connection to my schedule and and, and, and what controls life. <laughs> a better connection to that than I do with the vine. Don't lose your connection. Because a connection to the vine gives life. And that's not a connection that you can fake. You can't kind of make that up. So, all right, so I have this branch from a tree in the yard, okay? And I have uh, some heavy-duty, strong duct tape. This will fix anything they say, right? That's what they say. If I were to take, go back outside and tape this branch really good to the tree that I took it from, will it grow? No. <laughs> it will not. It will <coughs> not. It's dead now. <coughs> it needs to be connected to the tree. See where we're going with this? It needs to be in the tree, connected to the tree's life-giving sap that runs through it to nourish it in order for this branch to have life. Jesus says, if one does not remain in me, he's like a branch that's thrown away and withers. It's easy for us to look like we're connected to Jesus. But if we're not connected through the vine, through his word, through his supper, then like that branch, our faith is going to wither. So not only is it important, imperative, the red letter words of Jesus to stay connected to him, it's also important to stay concerned connected to each other through our faith in Jesus Christ. Our faith gets nourished and strengthened from Christ and from each other. Staying connected to each other means that we have a presence. And man, that has been hard to do this past year. Staying connected to each other. Staying connected to each other means that we have a presence. We're not alone. We have someone to share our lives. Someone is there for us, just like all of you are there for each other. And then he pushes it a step further, and he asks us to stay connected to people we don't even know. Let's add another layer of challenge to our relationship to Christ. We, ask, we are asked to stay connected to people we don't even know personally, but we use our gifts to help others who need it whether we know them or not, to pray for our brothers and sisters who are part of a wider circle of the world, to get involved in other things to show love to others. Relationships are important. Relationships give us meaning and purpose. Where would we be if not for the relationships in our lives? Our families, our friends, our Lord. Everything changes when we see life as this interconnected piece, this vine and branches connection. So staying connected is important. It's, it's important in our relationships with the people close to us. It's important for people we don't even know. And it's most important in our relationship to God. Remain in Christ. Stay connected. That's the message. That should have been the title today. Stay connected, because when we remain connected in Jesus, we have the power and the ability to produce fruit. It's the fruit of thanks and the fruit of praise, which gives glory to our gracious God for all that he's done. Stay connected, folks.
Let's pray about that. Lord, in this world of being so connected, sometimes we feel so pulled apart. Thank you for your word that draws us back together. Thank you for this analogy that we are the branches that cling to the vine for nourishment and for growth. And help us to do that in our world that distracts us by so many other things. Give us whatever it is we need to stay connected. We pray in your name. So we shift and we think about moving from hearing God's word to participating in God's word. And if you think about today's scripture, and if you go back and look at it later and you see all of these, you know, he goes through and he goes, I'm the good shepherd, I'm the vine, I'm the door, I'm the light of the world, I'm, you know, all those things. That is all part of the conversation that Jesus is having around the table. This dinner conversation, this dinner conversation on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, was trying to help those disciples feel connected. You and I come around this table every week to try to feel connected. And it does. We feel connected to our God. We feel connected to each other. We are not alone. Every time we gather together in our tradition, it's weekly. It is central to who we are because it represents this relationship that we have with Christ. So come to the table. All are invited. It's your table. Prepare your table at home in front of you. All of those things. Know that God is here and God shows us how much he loves us by sending Jesus. Come slowly. Examining your connection to the vine as you come around this table. Our song to sing or reflect on or, or just listen to is called, This is a Day of New Beginnings. And we'll reflect on that song as we come preparing ourselves for communion. This is a time of worship where we unite as one to remember what Christ has done for us. All are welcome to partake in this communion table because this is the Lord's table and we are all invited at his invitation. Let us pray. Lord, we come to your table on this beautiful spring day with the flowers starting to bloom we ask you to come and help us to get the weeds away from our lives. Help us to be rooted in you so that we may bloom glorious colors full of your love. Help us to always remember that, the, that you are deep rooted in us through Jesus' death for our sins. Nourish us and refresh our souls as we partake in this bread and cup so that we may be fruitful and multiply our paths each day as we walk in your glory. Help us to share your love by giving our blossoms to all we meet. Amen. 
And on the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the loaf of bread and he blessed it. And when he had given thanks, he said, take this bread, which I give to you, it's broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, Jesus took the cup and he said, this is my blood shed for you. Whenever you drink of it, drink of it in remembrance of me. Let us partake in the Lord's Supper. together this morning. I hope you remember your connections as you leave this place and go about your week. Remember that you are connected to the vine that gives you nourishment and that gives you life. I invite you to stand as we sing our closing song, Praise the Lord. I will offer a benediction and then we will gather back together for prayer. So let's stand and sing our closing song, Great is the Lord. No?
Go now and love one another because love is from God. And may God, the vine grower, tend you and make you fruitful. May Christ Jesus abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.